Um, let's look at the third predictor uh, of divorce's defensiveness in arguments. Take a look. What do you mean I'm always watching TV? I'm working. Can I watch the news? You're always watching TV and the kids. No, the TV is usually off. I can't watch a little bit of TV. Yeah. So, Dr. Gottman, defensiveness, why is that so toxic? Well, the reason it's so toxic is that people are not taking responsibility for a part of the problem. And when people, when the masters of relationships, instead of being defensive, take responsibility and say, well, so what's your point? I mean, it makes some sense what you're saying. Tell me more. And they take responsibility for even a small part of the problem. Then, you know, you're kicking around the problem together. It's like you're playing soccer and kicking a ball around together. You're a team working on this joint problem. The, the, and, yeah, so defensiveness gets in the way of that. Right. And the fourth one, the fourth predictor is, is stonewalling. Take a look. So uh, we all know what that is. Right. Um, I mean, is any one of these things a predictor of divorce? Yeah, all of them sort of ride oh. together. They're the four horsemen of the apocalypse. You know, they're like in the book of Revelations. You know, they spell the end of days. And, uh, and stonewalling is really interesting because when we interview people who stonewall, 85% of our stonewallers in heterosexual couples are guys. Huh. And... And what predicts stonewalling is a heart rate above 100 beats a minute. And also, when we interview them about what they're thinking, they're really trying not to make it worse. They're saying to themselves, just shut up. You're going to make it worse. How long can she go on like this? She'll burn herself out. <laughs> Ten minutes to the game, she can't touch me then. <laughs> so the stonewaller is really trying to calm down and not make it worse. But when you're faced with somebody who's silent like that, you escalate, so it's a very destructive pattern.